Hi, this is Glenn Gabe from G Squared Interactive, and this is episode 20 of SEO from the Frontlines. Um, today, what I'm going to be doing is covering my latest post, um, which is about the uh, new features added to Chat GPT search. Um, pretty exciting news on that front. Um, OpenAI has been having their uh, 12 days of ship miss, so they've been shipping a lot each day. Um, and day eight was all about chat GPT search, right? So this is where they're trying to compete with Google, steal market share, search share, um, et cetera. So there were some really cool things announced. So I'm just going to quickly run through that. Again, it's all in my post if you want to go check that out. Um, and there's a surprise for the end, which is pretty interesting. I was hoping it would happen today and it did. So let's hop in. So first of all, um, Chat GPT search was originally launched in October, right? And it was for uh, paid members. Um, so I've had access to that for a while. And it's really interesting. It's very perplexity like, um, you know, you search like here I put in uh, best sand wedges 2024. It lists all the different sites you could ho hover over. There are citations, there are links to publishers, which is great to see. Um, and actually, if you click the sources button at the very bottom, um, you'll see on the right hand side, uh, on the right sidebar, you have all citations that were listed there with links to those sites, and then just more sites that you could actually visit. So there are definitely links galore for publishers, which is also great to see. But that's not new. That's the only thing new there is that now all logged in members, whether they're paid or free, will have access to chat GPT search. So you can go ahead and try it out today. Um, definitely interesting to get a view of it versus Google versus perplexity, um, et cetera. So you could definitely go through that and start comparing. The other thing I wanted to mention before I move on is that all links from chat GPT search have um, UTM code. So it's UTM source and it's chatgpt.com. So you could actually go into Google Analytics GA4 um, and set up some reporting there and view uh, from the source chatgpt.com just to see uh, what's coming through. Um, so you could see that right there. This is one of the links I clicked through from the sand wedges uh, search I conducted on ChatGPT search. So, all right. So, and then I covered uh, heading towards Jarvis. So after ChatGPT was originally launched in November of uh, 2022, early 2023, when Google issued its code red to kind of catch up, um, I wrote a whole post about it. Um, and one thing I mentioned at the end is because people kept asking me, like, where is this all headed? And it's to me, it was always headed towards everyone having their own personal Jarvis. Right. So <clears throat> you have your own AI assistant. Um, it's going to know everything about you. It's going to know where you visited, where you are, et cetera. It could do things on your behalf like an agent. Um, it could buy things, browse things, um, sign up for things, whatever it may be, maybe tracking the latest news and giving you the headlines every now and then, whatever it is. Um, that's where we're headed, right? So the idea of, you know, typing in searches on a search engine and going through all the results and everything and taking all that time, that's going to be a thing of the past at some point. Anyway, that's what I thought. Now they're all, there's a lot of talk about agents and AI moving towards that direction. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because there's um, something that was announced a part of this, which I'll cover in a few minutes, um, that definitely takes us a step closer to Jarvis. All of this AI search is taking us closer to Jarvis, but there's something in particular that Google's also doing, but OpenAI is doing now that takes us closer. So some of the announcements um, about the new features on day eight of Shipmas was and I said, hello, local search, right? So local search is obviously very, very important to Google. People searching for restaurants or hotels or businesses near them to go and buy things. Um, so with uh, the latest features, you now have uh, maps integrated with ChatGPT search. So that had to happen at some point. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. It's not like Google yet, um, but it's getting there. So for example, I did Italian restaurants, Princeton, um, you can see the first thing that shows up is map view, it gives me several restaurants located on the map. Um, there's actually a carousel here that you can't really see, but you can swipe through, uh, tap on each of the restaurants if you wanted to. Um, so this is list view, up here is map view. When, once you tap on a restaurant or any business, it brings up a card with directions, a link to the website. You can call um, right from your phone. Um, and then it has some other information like the phone number, the website, um, hours are there. Um, it shows review count, 
I don't know exactly where that's coming from. I checked Bing. It didn't look like it was matching up. I'll, I'll have to dig into that a little more. Um, but you actually can't see reviews as of now. So that's definitely one something that OpenAI has to do with ChatGPT search. Um, the reviews have to be in there and maybe a more robust system. The other thing I noted was um, I'm wondering if OpenAI is going to launch something like Google, Google Business Profiles, um, which is obviously a very big system where businesses can register their businesses and put all information and hours and all sorts of information. Um, I don't know if OpenAI is going to do something like that or if maybe they just partner with, you know, a third party data provider that has local businesses as part of it. I don't know yet, but um, something to, you know, definitely watch, especially if you're focused on local SEO. Um, the next thing announced was improved navigational queries, right, and the ad opportunity, which I'll cover in a second. Um, so first they announced that if, you know, they understand that you're, you know, you enter a navigational query, which is one where someone, a user enters a query really to go and find a specific site or place within a site. Um, before they weren't actually surfacing these cards. Now they are. Um, as you see here, if I enter Reddit, they know I want to go to Reddit. So this card shows up at the very top, uh, very prominent uh, looking and location so you can get to where you need to go. Um, again, if you're going to be a serious search engine, you need to understand navigational queries and get people to where they want to go pretty quickly. Um, but they gave another example, which was really interesting. So it wasn't just for a specific site or location in a site. It was a type of site. So if you put in vacation booking sites, suddenly at the top of the SERP, you have several cards. One, I'm calling the Uber business for that specific category. And here it would be Expedia. And then there's booking.com, Kayak, Priceline, and, and others as well. Um, so what this is going to do is definitely anger a bunch of businesses, right? Because now it's surfacing just a handful that are obviously getting prominent placement and visuals um, versus everything else that's listed below. So, um, you know, very interesting to see. And, you know, what I said there was what a great way to start search advertising for ChatGPT, right? Because this is easy. I mean, there would be a lot of companies that would love to, and I mocked this up here, it's not live, um, but sponsored listings when someone's looking for a category of site or even for a brand, right? Because in Google ads, you could do that too. You can bid on brands. You just can't have that brand that's um, trademarked in your ad. So this could lead to a lot of revenue for ChatGPT search, in my opinion. And it's kind of a very smart way for them to kind of dip their toes in the search ad um, business. So We'll see if that happens. I think it will. It makes a lot of sense. And again, I mocked it up here so you can uh, take a look at what that would look like. Um, now, what I mentioned before about Jarvis, um, the other thing that they mentioned was uh, uh, ChatGPT has something called live mode, which is really cool. Um, so that's where you can, uh, on your phone, uh, actually it's on desktop now as well, but on your phone you can tap the little icon that um, it basically is at the bottom right where you, then you could actually chat live with ChatGPT, right? So you could ask it all sorts of things. Now, that was cool, but it wasn't tapping into the latest um, information. Now, live mode can tap into ChatGPT search, right, for the most up-to-date information and stuff like that. So again, why is this important? Because Jarvis needs real-time information, needs to tap into search, and now it can. Now, what's really interesting is that um, you know, they announced this a few days ago, and they said oh, over the next few days it'll launch. Um, it just launched today. So as of last night, it still wasn't working. I just tried it before um, it works, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. But I just wanted to uh, mention that Google also has something just like it. It's called Gemini Live, and they've had that since August of 2024, and uh, that can actually tap into Google search as well, as you would imagine. So again, this is all like when you talk with it, it's like talking to Jarvis out of Iron Man, right? It's, it's there. It's real time. You can interrupt it. Um, so you know what? Let's just jump in and actually give it a try. So what I'm going to do is launch ChatGPT, and then I'm going to ask some questions to live. So right now I'm tapping. It's the little uh, icon all the way to the right um, with the little audio uh, visual there. Can you tell me about the latest Google spam update from December? Google's December 21st 
2024 spam update aims to improve search quality by targeting spammy content. It's rolling out globally and may take about a week to complete. This update follows a core update that started on December 12th and is expected to finish in two weeks. If you need more specific details or advice on how this might impact your sites, feel free to ask. Cool. Thanks for the information. Is there any specific website I should check out to find more information about this? You're welcome. Search Engine Land and Search Engine Journal are great resources for detailed information on Google's updates. Google Search Central blog also provides official announcements and insights. These sites will keep you updated with the latest... That's, that's cool. Sorry to interrupt. But can you tell me a little more about the December Core update, which just launched? Google's December 2024 Core update started on December 12th and finished on December 18th. It aimed to improve search quality by better understanding user intent and content trustworthiness, rewarding high-quality, user-focused content. Websites might have cool. seen ranking change. Hey, I appreciate it. I got to run. No problem at all, G. Take care and talk to you later. As you can see, that is the beginnings of Jarvis, right? I mean, it is pretty cool. It called me G. It's, it knows my nickname, um, and it's given me all the information that I need. Um, including websites to visit, uh, when it rolled out. And just so you know, the spam update literally just rolled out like an hour ago. So uh, really cool that I can do that. So uh, I'm going to add that information that it rolled out finally to my post. So you can check out my post for more information about this. Um, definitely keep an eye on uh, ChatGPT search. That and perplexity and others are going to be challenging Google and we'll see how much share they can take. So um, that's it. Until the next uh, podcast, which is probably next year. Can't say that for sure, but probably. Um, I appreciate you listening. And uh, if you've liked my podcast, definitely subscribe. Um, and that's it. I will see you on the other side. Thank you.